Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Out of the Park Baseball 25 with the San Francisco Giants. And I cannot stop playing this game. Um, I don't know what it is about the new release of this game. I mean, I'm going to play, I'll play this game hard until, you know, the playoffs until probably September or October, and then I'll put it down and I won't play it again until February. It's, it's weird, but I am all in right now and out of the park baseball 25. So, um, I simmed through June. Uh, we are at July 1st and it's been all right. And we're 43 and 41, uh, 10 and a half games out of first place. We were. 15 and 12 in June. So a couple of 15 and 12 months sandwiched around a 10 and 16 May. Uh, yeah. So sorry. I just got a notification that distracted me. If we take a look at the offense, it still hasn't been great. Uh, Manzardo uh, and Naylor were our two pickups back in May. Uh, Manzardo hasn't hit uh, I'm contemplating sending him down to the minors and Going back to Velazquez and Naylor. Naylor at least has provided a little bit of offense. Three home runs, seven RBIs, a uh, little bit of offense. His contract demands eh, four years at 16 minutes, 60. I mean, we have the money, you know, so it might be something we consider because we can't afford to continue to just let offensive talent go like we did last season. So I think first things first, Manzardo can go back to, or he can go to AAA. Uh, and how did Meckler do in his time in, yeah, I mean, he absolutely tears up triple a, so he'll come back up. Um, what do we need here? We need a first baseman. So Naylor will go to first Meckler will come in in left field. And I think we do something like this. Yeah, that'll work. So our two best offensive players, Jung Hu Lee, Marco Luciano, not uh, not a surprise. Dylan Carlson, a bit of a surprise, though, giving us an 813 OPS, 121 OPS plus. Uh, Luciano was the rookie of the month in the month of June. He had a uh, really nice month, 349, 421, 675. I mean, starting to figure it out as a rookie. Um, you know, I mean, if he gives us 23 home runs, 79 RBIs, and 3.6 war while playing – yeah, I mean, I think he's probably more a, a second baseman than anything else. Um, I think that may be his final landing spot because I think that offense, that offensive line plays a whole lot better at second base than it does third. Um, are there any third basemen upcoming? No. Yeah, nothing, nothing defensive. I mean, maybe Bo Bichette. I mean, he's hitting pretty well for Toronto this year. All right, so I'm just going to restart. So, all right, <laughs> I, I got distracted. I had to do some some editing to get us back to this point. But I, I was thinking about Bo Bichette. And, I, I mean, offensively, he's had a good year. Um, his ratings are not bad. I mean, they're, they're not terrible. I mean, especially good against lefties, but I, I putting him at third base feels like a mistake because um, he's worse defensively than, than what we're putting out there. Um, I think the plan, I'm just trying to, I'm thinking my, my out, my, my plans for next year out loud. I think Luciano becomes our starting second baseman next year. I think this is it for Estrada. Because his contract expires at the end of this year. So if we can find a replacement third baseman this year, because I think Ahmed becomes our um, our backup middle infielder next season. And I think we go with Ortega as our starting shortstop. I think that's the plan defensively for next season. So we'll have Ortega at short, Luciano at second, and then we don't know who we're going to have at third yet. So if we can find that third baseman now, then it puts us in a good good place and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, I don't think there's anybody on the trade block. Yeah, there, Eduardo Escobar, but that's not a future signing and he's not even that good. Um, yeah, there's not a third baseman on the block. 
And Kata's not terrible defensively. I mean, he's making nothing. He's making no money at all. But that's not a move I want to make. So I think what we do is we get through the draft. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to take a look. You know, we'll take a look at, at the different players and we'll see what we can find. And maybe we can add a, a third baseman uh, this year before the season ends. So I think that's sort of the plan. Uh, we're going to get up to the draft and it's probably going to be a relatively quick draft just because it's not a very good draft. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to spend 40 minutes going through, you know, picks 12 and 13 or, you know, to, to, to find you know, which of these three players that are all bad is the least amount of bad. So let's, let's see how July goes. Not off to a good start. There we go. Nine, nothing win after a 13 to five loss. Vlad picks up his 10th home run. Naylor with a big game, four for five, three RBIs. You like to see that. So Vlad with a home run number 10 Lee two for five, two RBIs, Estrada with a couple of hits. Win goes five shutout. Who got the start in this game? Boyd. Okay. That was probably his worst start of the year. Final game against San Diego. It's a 6 3 loss. So, win, lo- a loss, win, loss, win. Logan Webb improves to nine and four. We get another home run from Vlad. So, that bat's starting to come around for Vlad. Up to a 755 OPS. It's starting to come around. I mean, if he gives us 25 and 100, I'll be fine with it. He's not that far off. So, um, yeah, not not the worst thing in the world. Bailey with a couple of hits. Lee, two for four, three RBIs. Game two against Colorado. 14 to seven in 11. So that's a seven-run 11th inning for us. Meckler with probably his best offensive game as a pro. Four for six. Vlad hits home runs in back-to-back games. Bottom of the order does a nice job. Three hits for Estrada. Sanchez, two for four, four RBIs. Zapuki had an ERA sub two prior to this game. He was at 1.96 coming into this game. He's been uh, a revelation for us. Uh, Doval pitches three innings. Interesting. All right, final game against Colorado. 7-4 loss. We're 3-3 three and three this month. Washington here at home, 5-1 loss, 3-2 win, so 4-4 four and four now this month. Glad that average continues to climb. He's up to 12 home runs, 56 RBIs, so 21 homers, 99 RBIs. So if he continues to play this way, we'll get that 25 and 100 out of him. Luciano, this 15th home run of the year. Harrison goes 5 and a third. Doesn't get the win, but that's okay. Washington again today, 7-4 win. Vlad, look at Vlad. July has been good to Vladimir Guerrero so far. We look at his batting splits for July, 425, 465, 800. Got four home runs and 11 RBIs in the month. And again, I said 25 and 100. You can give us 25 and 100. We'll take that. Right now he's at 23 and 101. Naylor's at 269, 324, 41. Yeah, I I mean I maybe not four years, but like three at three at fourteen. Takes us till he's thirty one. I feel like I'm comfortable with that. I think three years, forty-two million dollars for for this kind of bat against righties, I think is is valuable. Primarily as a first baseman, but you know, backup left fielder as well for sure. Yeah, I can I can I can see that as as being a good a good uh, good investment. All right, then we got our last game leading into the draft, and we win four to three. All right, so been a been a pretty good start to the month for us. Naylor, we offer him the contract, and he has a home run and a double. A couple RBIs. Make a lot of errors. Vlad, Naylor, and Estrada. So three unearned runs for Zapuki and four and two-thirds. We're nine games out. We are two games out of the wild card. 
So again, if we make a move for a third baseman, I'm more concerned about the future. Like I don't want to, we're not giving up really one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, even Bailey, if we can find a better catcher, catcher and third base are kind of those positions that I'm concerned about. Um, we're okay at shortstop for next season with Ortega. Um, so it'll be third base and catcher. And then obviously pitching we're we're fine. So, um, yeah. All right, let's get to the draft. So we're picking 25th. And again, it's just not a good draft. It's, you know, it's, it's not a good draft at all. If you look at, um, the batting potential, we've got Quentin Young, an 18 year old, wants $11 million. He'll be gone early. Ethan Holiday looks like a pretty good bat. Uh, you know, there's not a lot here. I mean, maybe if someone like – I don't even know. Michael Torres was somebody I was looking at. Good contact, good avoid K, but he wants $10 million. I'm not really ready to pay up a, a, um, a, a, an 18-year-old that kind of money. Jaden Davis, more of a third baseman. There's some decent two way. There's some decent pitchers in here that are two way guys. If Cam Cam and Itty fell to me, that would be a no brainer. Uh, I don't suspect he will, but he's on there. Boston Kellner's a two way guy. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to, just get to our pick. Cam and Itty's there. I mean, I I feel like that's an easy option. High leader, high loyalty, high adaptability, high work ethic. He's both a uh, uh, a, a pretty good pitcher, potential pitcher, 55, 50, 55, 45, uh, with three good pitches. And he's got a pretty good bat fifties down the board. I mean, I feel like Caminiti is the easy option here. He only wants $4 million. McKernan's more of, more of a, uh, he wants $11 million. Yeah, I'm not, and McKernan's good, but I'm not going to give him that much. Dylan Adkins is another one. If he's there with the next pick, maybe another two-way guy. Boston Kellner's a two-way guy. Um, yeah, I don't want to overthink it. I didn't think someone like Cam and Eddie would fall to me. With all of the uh, the the positive personality traits, I feel like that's the right move. So Cam, Cam, Cam and Eddie, the son of Ken, will be our first pick in the draft. Go to our next pick, and we still have Dylan Adkins there. Again, not a bad bat. Boston Kellner, 45. Again, all the good personality traits, 45, 50. Control's not great. Bat's okay. Who do they think we should take? Jaden Stroman. Huh. 55 contact, 60 gap, 45 power, 45 eye. Good defensively. Probably a second baseman, but a lot of good ratings there or the personality ratings. Nothing about work ethic, but all the other stuff you like to see. Um, I saw RJ there and got excited. It's not RJ Mayer, it's RJ Austin. So we got Chase Lavolette. No, I'm, I, you guys know, those of you who have watched my playthroughs before, know I like uh, drafting 21, 22-year-olds rather than 18-year-olds. But I think in these first couple of drafts that are just so bad, I think it's just find the players with the best ratings and take them and then kind of keep your, your you know, kind of hope that, that they turn out the way you want. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm fine going with Stroman, I think. It's good defensively. Maybe a third baseman with those ratings. 55, yeah. The 65 arm. Yeah, we'll take Jaden Stroman. Oh, that's right. We had all these, we had all the, 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 um, right. We had all of the comp picks. I forgot about that. We have two comp picks here in the first round. That's how we ended up with, with, uh, being able to take um, a couple of really good players. So now they want us to take RJ Austin. Low work ethic, which I don't love. It's 
kind of a bad year to have multiple comp picks, though. You know what I mean? High work ethic, Josh Hartshorn. Another high school guy. Uh, let's go back to pitchers and I think maybe we just take... Ooh, which one do we take? This is probably the best pitcher of the bunch, but just awful uh, personality traits. Let's do it this way. Kellner, high adaptability and intelligence. He's a ground ball guy. 50 stamina. Marcos Paz. High work ethic. He's extremely hard to sign, but we have the money. He is truly just a pitcher. 65, 50, 40. He's 18 years old. I think we take Paz. A shot in the dark here. I mean, it's a lot of money. He wants $9 million. The other two guys, our second round pick, I think is going to be under slot. Yeah, let's take Marcos Paz. Paz. And if we can't, if we don't sign him, we'll get another comp pick next year. All right, go to our next pick. Kellner and Adkins are still there. Um, I think we're trying to land them both here. So we'll take Kellner first. Adkins is still there, so we'll take him as well. All right. I mean, I feel pretty good about that, honestly. I feel pretty good about those picks given how weak this draft is. I think we got some players that can help us. Again, I, it, who knows, really, right? I mean, it's it's with with the ratings of some of these players, you just have no idea. Patrick Forbes, high work ethic. He plays for Louisville, 45-50. 45-40. I'm, I'm trying to picture this without getting rid of Babbitt. I'm trying to picture this old school. 45 contact, 45 power, 50, or gap power, 55 power, 45 eye, 50 avoid K. So he's decidedly average down the board, but looks like everybody is here, right? Looks like everybody here is. Um, Donis Guzman. I think we can go after someone like Guzman. He's very good defensively. He's a college kid. High work ethic. If the bat develops at all, where is he? No. If the bat develops at all, he becomes a solid catcher for us, which is something we don't have. Fielding ratings. Matthew Bowden. High work ethic, but no real bat to speak of. I mean, none of these guys are going to have bats, right? I mean, if they were good def if they were good offensively, they would have been taken already, given how bad the uh, the draft pool is. Um, contact. Yuck. And this is kind of where I was like, all right, well, you know, maybe we'll we'll go through the first handful of picks and then that'll be it. Um, pitchers, knuckleballers. Nope. Knuckle curve. Nope. Nope. Oh, dear Lord. This is ugly. And an archer. We just, you know, I, I mean, <sighs> taking pictures is is fine, but we just, <laughs> I, I hate to say you just don't. We just don't have a need, but we just, we really don't have a need. This guy looks good. Let's see if he's still there. Cooper Rummel. He is. We can take him. Yeah, 55 fastball is the best. Xavier Cardenas, I'm going to take him because he tends to develop in a lot of 
he, he tends to get that that TCR bump in a lot of playthroughs that I've done, so we'll take him. Now, is there a batter that I want at all here? This is just ugly. Sure, we'll take Diego Velasquez. And then I'm going to let the AI do the rest because this is just bad. Their pick is going to be as good as mine at this point. So go ahead and pick. Uh, let's go to negotiate. So let's start with pause. So if we take pause, yeah, here's the thing. This is where um, money is going to become an issue. If we take pause, we're going to use the majority of our budget room. And then we won't be able to pay overslot for Kellner or Rummel, who I feel like having Kellner and Rummel is a better value than having Paz. And then maybe we get the comp pick for Paz last next year. So let's do it this way. Let's meet his contract demand. Uh, Kellner, let's meet his contract demand. Then everybody is at or under slot, so we should be fine there. And since Strowman is very easy, I think we'll offer him less than the 2-6. I think that means we can still offer... He's only 17. He wants 700K. Sure, it's nothing. Uh, all right, so let's offer him... And then he wants two six. So let's just offer him two. My guess is he probably takes it. And then pause. I think we just do nothing with. Um, it's got the high work ethic, which I love. Um, but if we can garner a comp pick next year, and um, in a bet, hopefully in a better draft. So I think we do that. So all right, we've made our picks. Let me know your thoughts of the draft. I think ultimately our draft went okay, considering um, considering the uh, uh, the talent that was there. I didn't expect Cam and Nitty to fall to me, honestly. Uh, and I don't know that he ever develops, but I mean, 55 potentially has got all the personality traits you look for. So he's at least set up to succeed. Um, we'll see how it goes. Stroman looks like an okay player. Again, probably make him a third baseman with those defensive ratings, or maybe a second baseman. Uh, Kellner and Adkins are both two-way guys that may or may not develop, and then from there, it just it is what it is. So, um, All right, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to do this. So we're going to go to hitters, need a third baseman, uh, who is at least a 55 defense, uh, who's got – we need some pop out of our third baseman, right? And what do we have for players that look like this? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Um, I would love an, an Isaac Paredes, even though he's not hitting this year. Just curious if we gave you Eldridge, Birdsong. I'm just curious what it takes to, yeah, okay, so. Okay, so that's not happening. All right, that's fine. Uh, so let's back off the contact. Maybe it's the defense that we back off. Gives us a few more options. Options that likely won't be traded by the teams. Um, all right, so it's that 60 power that really changes things. Interesting.
Spencer Steer looks like a decent player. He's been playing primarily left field for them. Nolan Jones is somebody I would love. I had no idea he was a 2020 guy in, in Colorado in, uh, last year in, in real life. No idea at all. Um, Bregman, Witt, Nito, Correa, Royce Lewis. Doesn't have the arm for third base. There's Gleiber again. Bring him back. Huh. Is there any way we can get Nolan Jones? I mean, it starts with Harrison and Webb, so that tells me that it's not... Make me an offer I can't refuse. Um... What about I can give up Doval? What if so if we started with Doval? I mean, I, we start with Doval and then we go. Birdsong. If we put Sable in there, take Birdsong out. Ortega, Birdsong, win. I mean,. Do I really care about that? Can I get a reliever back from them? Do they have a reliever that isn't absolute hot smoking garbage? I mean, this feels like a great deal for us. Doval is really, really good. If we traded Doval, we would have to find a new closer. But, I mean, he's 28 years old. His ARB number for next season is five and a half, is almost six. Nolan Jones, his ARB number for next season is less. He's a captain. His ratings are fantastic. And then maybe we use... Estrada to try to find ourselves a closer. I mean, this, this feels unrealistic, and that's kind of the problem I'm running into here, is my goal wasn't to completely tear down this team. But, I mean, we're running with Harrison, Webb, Lee, Matos, Luciano, Luke Jackson, Meckler, Rogers, Ahmed. Ben. I mean, they're, so players that we brought in in the last year and a half, Vlad, Ired, Carlson, Naylor, P Pavetta, Velazquez, Boyd. And that's really it. So if we make this, I mean, it feels fine to me. We would get Nolan Jones from Colorado. We put him at third base. And then our infield next year is Jones, Ortega, Luciano, and 
you know, a combination of Velasquez and Naylor and um, Manzardo at first. I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to try to find a closer. That it, it, it just it feels like like absolutely 100% the right move. So Estrada comes out. Jones comes in. We put Jones at third. We move Luciano to second, and then we do this. And all of a sudden, this lineup is – significantly deeper. Meckler, Lee, Guerrero, Nolan Jones at third. Yeah, 100%. That feels like the right move. Makes us better defensively and it makes us better offensively. Can leave Jones in the seven hole there. And now we just need to find a a, 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 a um, reliever. So if we go to transit, uh, that's not where I wanted to go. Uh, here, trade block. Relievers. Chad Green, extreme fly ball, but he's had a pretty good season. Um, upcoming free agents. Huh, not a lot of good ones. All right, let's find a player. Let's do it that way. I'm pretty shocked I was able to do that, to be, to be completely honest with you. Uh, reliever, let's do closer. We want someone with elite stuff, someone with good movement, and then I don't care about control. Doval, Ben Joyce, Devin Williams, Mason Miller. He's out with a sprained ankle for three weeks. So you want one of my best players for Mason Miller. What about Ben Joyce? You want even more for Ben Joyce. All right, well, let's see how, let's see if we can make this work for Mason Miller. Jones, Harrison. Harrison, Jones, Lee, Luciano, Matos, Webb. Ortega, I can't move. Manzardo, I don't want to move. I, I, We need the power in our lineup. Webb and win. Okay. Hartle, I mean, do I really care about Josh Hartle other than him being our first pick? Mind giving up McCray? What if I remove him? Okay. And this is again, this is where if you guys think I should turn on hard mode, hard mode for trading, let me know. I just I know how to use the the trade system to, to add players and then subtract. So in this particular case, the big piece that we're giving up is Grant McCray. Walker Martin looks okay as a third baseman, but we just added Nolan Jones. So Martin McCray Diaz who is a 40 overall, good glove, no potential bat. Will Wilson, second baseman, he's 26 years old. And Diego Viegas in exchange for Mason Miller. He's going to be out for another couple weeks. But 80 movement, 55 stuff, 50 control. I think we pulled the trigger here. And... Um, 
just sort of try to tread water until Miller is back. So we're going to pick up Mason Miller as well. And those are going to be the two big moves that we make. And those are moves that are going to help us both for this year and next. So we do have to send somebody down now. And I think it's just time to trade Estrada for a reliever. Okay. Bucks out for five to six months, but what's his hard number for next season? Five? Sure. Cool. We're going to make that deal. Absolutely. 100%. So Puck will go on the, the DL as well. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to have uh, Mason Miller and AJ Puck in our, in our bullpen next year. Um, and I'm pretty excited for that. Assuming he's able to come back from, from this injury. Um, so we will call up Dabovich for now. All right. So who, what does the AI think we should do? Pavetta. I'm okay. Giving Pavetta a shot as our closer for the time being. So yeah, I just, you know, I feel like, so we just turned Camilo Doval and A handful of, and just so again, just so nobody can say that I'm doing anything shady. Got trading difficulty all the way up. Um, so we just tr turned. We just turned Camilo Doval and seven prospects, none of which are over potential. 45 into we traded Camilo Doval, Thyro Estrada, and seven prospects who none of which are 45 or over into Nolan Jones, Mason Miller, and AJ Puck. I feel like that's a successful trade deadline. I feel like that is a successful trade deadline, and we're going to sim through the rest of the month now. Let's see how this new look team, I guess, looks. Uh, where am I going? Schedule. Got the Yankees. Bailey is out. We lose four to three. All right. Team schedule. Yankees again. Four to one win. And Nolan Jones batting the leadoff. Interesting. Velasquez with a three-run homer. Pavetta picks up his first save as the closer. Final game for the All-Star break. It's an 11-6 loss in 10 innings. Ayard gives up three. Pavetta. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Jones, two for four. Three are uh, two for four, two RBIs. Uh, we're three games over 500. We're still two games out of the wild card. Um, Naylor signs his contract. So three years at, uh, 43 years, $42 million total. It's given us a seven sixty nine OPS. That's fine. Stroman and Velasquez both sign their, uh, so did Ryan Kennedy, Boston Kellner, uh, all-star game. Let's see the AL. Oh, that's the, prospect game. Do we have anybody in the prospect game? Josh Hartle. That's it. Uh, nationally, or here's the AL all-star team. Anybody of note there? Any former San Francisco Giants on this list? Nope. In the NL, Logan Webb made it 10 and four. Tyler Rogers made it. And we had nobody make it offensively. That is fine. God, the NL is stacked with good defensemen. That's impressive. Uh, where am I going? I'm going here. Kellner, Stroman. We will disable AI promotions for both of them. Kellner, we are going to make a two-way guy. Oh, he's already listed as a two-way guy. Cool. All right, let's 
sim a couple of days until our next game. Yeah, I think we're set. I don't think I'm going to make any more moves. The goal was to find a new third baseman, and in turn it forced us to find a new closer, but we did both. All right, we are through the All-Star game. First game out of the break. It's a 7-3 loss. 8-5 loss. Oof. So I wonder how much of this was Duvall. No? I mean, Pavetta's... I mean, Pavetta's not been terrible. I mean, that BABIP is just so ridiculous. You got to feel like that's going to come down. I mean, pitching-wise, we're fine. Our offense hasn't uh, done much. Um, I mean, Nolan Jones hitting 300 since we picked him up. First thing I want to do is make sure that he's almost... Yeah, he's almost never going to come out at third base. So uh, we're back at 500, which isn't good, but we'll survive. We're at Cleveland now for three. There's another loss and another loss and another loss. Wow. Okay. So very similar to when you guys were watching me in May, uh, 15 and 12 uh, 10 and 16, 15 and 12, 7 and 12. We got Cincinnati and the Mets to finish the month. Bart is eligible to come off to DL. Uh, we'll just stick him on a rehab assignment for now. We get, uh, we get Miller back in four days, so that'll be good. Hey, a victory. 7 to 6 in 10 innings. Vlad, 2 for 4. Three RBIs for Velazquez. Pavetta blows the save but gets the win. Yeah, it'd be nice to get uh, Mason Miller back out there. Oof, an 11-2 loss. We are struggling at the moment. We are three games under 500. Four games, and we're getting abs. We're getting trucked here. All right, Mets. Hey, a three nothing win over the Mets on the same day. We get Mason Miller back. That's big. Matos goes four for four. Pavetta picks up the save. Uh, we have to send a pitcher down. Dabovich, because he's been bad in his time. And then we go to, well, the injured list is here, Mason Miller. Makes Miller our closer. Pitching staff is still fine. Offensively, we're not good. How's Luciano doing at second? Still not good. Is it just because of a lack of experience? I mean, no, not really. He just might not be a very good defensive player, but... I think he's better served at second than he is anywhere else. Jones, still no home runs. Giving us a 790 OPS. Let's sim these final two games against the Mets. So back-to-back -back shutouts over the Mets. Lopez, two hits, two RBIs. Zapuki goes six and a third. Miller comes in, picks up the save, strikes out a couple in his debut. Rafael Montero looking to see if there are any neat deals that went down. Ranger Suarez for some middle relief help. Derek Curiel, a defensive outfielder. A pretty good bat. Good pickup, I think, by uh, L.A. Joe Mantiply for Alex Rodriguez, Alex Ramirez, rather. Devin Williams traded for Max Kepler. It's the biggest deal of the post of the, the regular season so far. I would hardly call Freddie Fermin a star, but I mean he's better than what we have. I 
think catcher. Yeah, I mean, at this point, when we go into next season, catcher is going to be our one real area of need. Um, Meckler's only hitting two thirty eight, but he is putting up almost a three fifty on base percentage. He's just there's no there's no. I mean, he's a single hitter. He's got six extra base hits and one hundred ninety two plate appearances. Um, maybe we can work on his gap power a little bit. Back this off, work on the gap power a bit. Back off on his running. Um, Yeah, and I think we'll just stick with what we have from a catching perspective and then kind of deal with it in, in the offseason. Yeah. All right, let's sim through today. We lose six to three. All right. So then we send us a Raldus Chapman. Sugaste, we drafted, or we had him. He might be up next season. He might be an option. Uh, all right, we gotta finish there. We lost six to three. And we're gonna finish the month fifty three and fifty six. Um, anything of no web drops a little bit, but he's still on pace for five and a half war. Maui Ahuna, he's hitting a little bit better in, in high A ball this year. Um, Dylan Adkins, we need to make him a two way guy. Where is – why can I not make him a two-way guy? What am I not seeing here? Why am I not seeing the option to make him a two-way guy? Where is it? Because he's already listed as a two-way guy, I guess. Caminiti and – Adkins, disable AI promotion. I assume Caminiti's the same way. Yep. All right. So we're going to leave him. Yeah, listed as a two-way player. Uh, all right. So not a good month on the field. 10 and 15. Um, hopefully we have another 15 and 12 uh, uh, month in our, in, our, in our back pocket here. But yeah, offensively, we're not great. I feel like we made some moves that should, in theory, make us better. Um, Naylor has been slightly below average, but I think long term against righties, that's a that's a solid pickup. Vlad had his best month of the year by far. Um, for us, at three twenty seven, four hundred two, five eighty two, and he's gotten better every month. So that's the encouraging thing, right? One sixty five, two sixty four, two seventy nine, three twenty seven. So the hope is that. He can end up in this world over the last couple months of the year. Nolan Jones, uh, still kind of getting his feet underneath him here, I guess, in in uh, San Francisco. No home runs, but um, you know if he can end up giving us three war, three and a half war out of our third baseman, I'm, I'll be fine there. Um, Luciano, he's on pace for 24 and 77. Again, you're not going to complain about that out of your second baseman. Dylan Carlson still having a good year. Uh, I mean, he's on pace for 12 and 67, 782 OPS, and that's fine. I'm assuming he's above average defensively. Yeah, well above average defensively at both both left and right. Uh, Luis Matos, not giving us much power, but, you know, whatever. He's uh, providing some offense in a place where we're lacking it, and he's been good in left and right as well, not particularly good in center. Uh, we talked about Vlad, talked about Naylor. Lopez continues to hit. He's similar. He's like the infield version of Matos. Bailey is bad. Ahmed can't hit either. He can still field, but he can't hit. Meckler. I mean, he's hitting 236 with a 325 Babbitt, which means he's been even worse than you would kind of consider. And then Velasquez has been terrible. Um, although, his, again, his ratings suggest he should hit better against lefties. 50. Contact, 50 gap power, 60 home run power, 55 avoid K, a 45 avoid K, 50 I. Um, but as a platoon guy with Naylor, I'm, I'm fine with that. 
Uh, and then from a pitching perspective, Webb and Harrison. At the, I mean, Harrison's like five and eight. That's just a damn shame. Uh, but Webb, Harrison, and Zapuki are probably the best one, two, three in the game this year. Uh, Boyd has his ERA is kind of skyrocket. He looked like he had a really bad month of July. Yeah, ten point one two ERA in July. So hopefully he can settle that down. Keaton Wynn has struggled a bit, four point six five ERA. Um, and our bullpen has been fine for the most part. Pavetta hasn't been good, but again, he's rocking that four forty Babbitt. So I got to hope that that comes down here at some point. So, uh, all right, that's going to do it for this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and sim. I mean, we are five and a half games out of a wild card. Um, last year I stopped right at uh, October 1st because I assumed that we would make the playoffs and I just want to come back and do that last month. Um, I may sim to the end of the regular season. If uh, we don't make a run, if we do make a run, you know, I'll come back when we're, when we're in the height of the pennant push. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Let me know how you feel like we did at the deadline. I feel like the moves we made were really effective. Whether or not they'll translate, I don't know. But we picked up Nolan Jones, we picked up Mason Miller uh, as our deadline transactions. So that's going to do it. Uh, As always, appreciate you watching. Appreciate the support. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.